I'd like to call to order the District of Chatwin meeting. And can I get the opening statement read, please? Thank you. Prior to the adoption of the agenda, is there any new business in council? Yeah, good. Okay, adoption of the agenda. All those in favor? Carry. Minutes. Uh, the regular council meeting held on February 21st, 2023. Any omissions or errors? All those in favor? Carried. Minutes of the public hearing held on February 21st, 2023. Motion to receive. I believe on here. Yeah. Okay, councillors. Yep. Any discussion? Errors? Just because I was away and a bit curious, uh, did members of the public attend and have any feedback about that? So when that happens, everything's good. All right, uh, delegations. I, okay, let's vote on that so you go back up a little bit. All those in favor? Carried. Okay, delegations. Bill Evans, Chetland Community Foundation, uh, support plan to join Peace Regional Foundation. Pastor, or is it still uh, Bill Evans? <laughs> Which one? Okay. Technical, I'm not. I'm uh, able today to here today to represent the Community Chetwin Community Foundation. It's been functioning in our community since 2008. Um, if you don't know what the foundations do, you go into some cities like Grand Prairie, they've got a big sign there, Community Foundation. Uh, I know years ago, we were gonna do something with a, a church project, and they said apply to Vancouver Foundation. And uh, one of the churches, Rolla Baptist, I think got a big grant Vancouver Foundation. The foundations provide money and whatever, but our Janine Disher was involved in this setup of the one that we put together, and she um, uh, found all the information that was necessary, and the council went ahead, and there was a matching grant somewhere. I'm not sure of all the details of how it came about, but uh, we ended up with about 100, and with some community donations, CN donated money and things like that. We ended up with 100 and uh, 55,000. I think it was some of that was tied into the Rotary, which we gave back in time. Um, anyway, we've come to the point where it's just hard to get people to volunteer and come forward. And with the COVID story and the downturn in the economic situation for a bit there, our, we just used the interest off the foundation grant that we had to give uh, grants to the community. We had uh, money uh, given to the Legion bus when they had that Legion bus for the seniors. Hot lunches with the schools, uh, the um, Mrs. Bazanowski's uh, school, uh, what was that thing called? The circus came, the circus camp, and uh, helped with that uh, several years and stuff like that. But we got to the place we can't carry on. And so um, Darren Schenkel, our, our most adamant guy to not close the committee, he, we tried to close it last year and he, he forbid. He said, no, let's give it one more year and see what we can do. And he went looking around and he found out with Dawson has taken over Fort Nelson and Tumble Ridge and uh, they have done that and so uh, he suggested but the other thing they found was that Dawson Creek the foundation is already there is already supporting things in Chetwin I don't know what that is but he's uh, the Sue Kenny is involved in that and and um, she hasn't got back to me for my phone call after to talk about this but anyhow he was assuring us that uh, this has happened Mr. Deck um, Councillor Deck sitting there we, we're just going to give this money away that's your job look out for us now <laughs> the taxpayers of Chetwin 
that uh, the money that we have uh, whatever so we uh, had in our plan to uh, join the Dawson Creek Foundation and uh, with the uh, idea that benefits would still come to Chetwa because people here can apply for what's going on uh, through this foundation over there would be a, a peace regional one uh, what was the plan and uh, so we were talking with just a courtesy information to the council and now says well is there any questions can that money be given back so we went digging through the information and I think you have it there but number six talks about uh, in the situation what the uh, event with dissolution or winding up of the corporation its remaining assets after payments or liabilities or whatever it would be distributed to more qualified donors uh, as defined under the provisions of the Income Tax Act. So it's, uh, our money was given at arm's length from the council and town and it was given and set up as a, com a community uh, that could take and, and be a charity and uh, we functioned that way over the years and now we're at the closing point. So we believe we have to give the money uh, back to on to another foundation. So we just want your support for that idea uh, today with our presentation here. If there's any questions I can answer, I would, but um, that's what we're seeking, just kind of um, uh, support to say, yes, carry on with that. And then we will, people will filter out there that people can apply for grants there. I'm finished. Talk loud, I left my hearing aids at home. Mm -hmm. What? I'm just wondering in the past, how were the donations um, applied for? What was it an annual distribution? It was usually semi annual. Uh, we would put an ad in the paper if you wanted to. Uh, take part in whatever and and then we would get together as a committee and discuss and, and twice a year generally we did that and we would have some we've had as much as 1500 to give away so we divide that in two sometimes we tried to make worthwhile situations get enough money to make a difference whatever they were doing like the bus or the legion and such like okay and will it it will it be the same then the those funds will still be available to chat when they'll be it'll be like advertised somehow that it's time to apply that will not be uh, our committee will fold up so but we will link it and so we're already linked to the chat page I told you i wasn't technical right there's something out there that calls chat page go chat page or something like this and uh, it's already on there and we will carry on with that saying that you can apply to the through the Dawson Creek, whatever the name of it is, uh, South Peace uh, uh, Community Foundation. I guess uh, the one, uh, one, question, one question that I didn't ask uh, last time is, uh, so the initial funds from the NDIP and Chetland, it's just been the interest that's been, that's been handed out in um, requests and stuff, is that going to remain, is that funding going to remain and operate the same way? You're saying that the funds that we give to Dawson, what percentage wise or however? Would it still be running off the interest? Oh yes, yes, that's how foundations work. They, they The money is given, they just only can touch the interest and work from there. Thank you, Bill. I just have to say thank you for your work because I know that our volunteers are the cornerstone of our, our community and that it's clear that you have been struggling uh, to find members to sit on your board. And I think it's a brilliant concept to amalgamate with a larger board. It's, uh, you know, more hands make less work and makes you available to do more work in our community on other things. So thanks again. Thank you. Um, when the foundation originally was planned, we talked about joining with Dawson then. And Mark Manier it was the chair, and Schenkel and I, and uh, Betty Deck, and some others, and we said, let's try our own. So we made a noble effort. We put our shoulder to the plow, tried hard. It just seems to be, it's, it's better to amalgamate with a bigger situation. So that seems to be the story we're at right now. We're looking for your blessing. 
any other uh, questions for uh, Bill? Okay, uh, yeah, thanks for everything, Bill. Uh, we will uh, discuss this. Uh, we do not discuss uh, these items in front of uh, delegations, so uh, we will discuss them uh, in, uh, in our meeting. Thank you. Thanks. No bylaws, and we'll go straight to our reports. Uh, from the mayor's uh, perspective, on uh, uh, the continue uh, continuing with the camper closure with the transition team, our next meeting will be March the 9th, and uh, we will continue. And there's a few other. Uh, Others that will join from our local leaders. So we will have uh, a few more uh, delegates that will attend our meeting on March the 9th. And uh, the provincial government uh, uh, is heading this transition team. They are the, uh, the lead in this. So uh, hopefully they're listening to what uh, the transition team has to say. Uh, right now it seems to be uh, going that way. So I hope it doesn't change. Uh, it's uh, the closure is coming soon. It's April and the end of April and the first week in May. So we have uh, only a few, uh, I guess, a month and some to go. So it's very important that this transition team uh, assist uh, where they can and uh, and be productive. Uh, I guess, for lack of a better term, because we have to do what we can for for the employees and for us here in Chatham. Uh as for the PRRD, uh, Civics Property Commission, uh, the budget uh, the budget has been uh, a draft budget, and all the recommendations from the Civic Properties Commission, a total of 17, uh, 10 from the Chetland Arena, and seven from the Leisure Pool side. There are, all the recommendations have been accepted and carried, so uh, that's very good for uh, the recommendations. All the recommendations and uh, uh, the meetings that we have in the PRD can be found on the PRD website, www.prd.bc.ca slash agendas and minutes slash. Or you can call 1-250-784-3200. So all that stuff can be found. As uh, for uh, the provincial government, I got a call from Minister Cullen uh, giving us an update on uh, some funds that are coming from the provincial government. They said that was extra, but uh, that's a good thing if they had extra money. And uh, in the next meeting, we will give uh, the amount out of how much is uh, coming towards uh, Chatham. Or they said it was stackable and for what term that means in the provincial government and us, so we'd be able to give a better uh, better information when we get uh, that amount and what stack low means. Okay, that's uh, my report. Uh, any other reports? Just had our, I think it's every six weeks or every eight weeks, uh, Peace Willis and Advisory Committee meeting last Friday. Um, Dam and all things concerned are, are going along. There's a lot of new members at the table with the new mayor in Fort St. John and Dawson Creek. Um, but yeah, nothing out of the ordinary there. Just uh, just a general update and everything is going as planned. And then the only other thing, next meeting uh, for the first time since COVID is going to be on site. It's going to be in Mackenzie. Thank you. Any other uh, reports? Not seeing any. We will continue. Uh, can I get a motion to receive the report, says? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Carry. Uh, discussion items. B1, email from the Federation of Canadian Municipalities dated February 21st, 2023. Uh, FCM's 20. 
23 Annual Conference and Trade Show. Make the recommendation that Council authorize two members of Council to attend the Federation of Canadian Municipalities 2023 Annual Conference and Trade Show, May 25th through 28th, 2023 in Toronto, Ontario. Discussion. When I read this uh, recommendation, my immediate feeling was um, during these uncertain economic times, we have to be really cautious with our taxpayers' dollars. And I would like to understand further the value of this conference, uh, just so I can relay it to my community when they do ask. Steph, uh, I believe we're a member, and if you could elaborate on some of that stuff. Well, the, the general benefit of, of, of any type of conference like this is, is of course, networking, strength in numbers, uh, discussing issues with people that are going through the same issues. So it it is generally described as a really worthwhile experience for, for local government to attend because it does give you more of a national perspective. And it also gives you the ability to, to talk with people that you might not normally get to talk with. So some fairly high ranking politicians, business leaders, community leaders, um, and, and so on. So um, there's quite a bit of, of information on it on, on Google, of course, on the internet, and you can you can fine tune some details there. But and I can I can we can you know staff can build you a, a, a information pamphlet if you'd like as well. But but generally, people that that go to this conference say that it's worthwhile. I know that we've discussed it before and I know that Toronto sounds like a long ways away but I mean other than the difference of you know of, it's not actually that much difference to fly to Toronto rather than Vancouver um, so that's we, we have talked about it that way before and, and cost wise it's not a lot extra in fact it's a little bit cheaper because it's fewer days than UBCM but I don't think it's out of line to assume that if somebody is going to be going to this conference to maybe bypass uh, UBCM because I've often felt at times that maybe not all of us are needed at, at UBCM. So I, I would think it'd be appropriate if we went to this to not go to UBCM. And of course, I do respect staff's recommendations. And I also understand that um, it wouldn't be recommended if it wasn't within the budget. But I just think it's an important conversation. So thank you. Any other, uh, myself with, uh, it was spoken today uh, with uh, networking. It's very important that we're members of the SEM and uh, they do uh, give us uh, uh, some uh, financial uh, outlook on what goes on in, uh, in the world. And when you have federation, that means the whole, whole of Canada. And when Steve, uh, when our CAO talks about uh, networking and people that you don't meet uh, on a, when we go to UBCM, we meet them on a federal basis, right? So this is very important uh, that uh, we have uh, delegations go. When I attended uh, two, the counselors that I've met, they come and there's uh, four or five of them from, uh, from certain uh, municipality cities. It's not just uh, the mayor or uh, one delegate, it's two or three because there's a lot to uh, gather from these, uh, uh, from FCM, and it, there's tons of information that we can bring back, but we don't bring back everything because you're only, uh, my last time there was only one, and I couldn't get to a few of them because they were filled, they, because I just didn't have the time. So they're very important to support. Uh, if you have two, three, it's uh, very important that we support each other and bring back information for sure. Any other discussion? Not hearing any on the motion. In favor? Carried. Uh, discussion items. Hope that we are past that. Correspondence. Mail information items one R one to four. 
Anything to be taken, lifted out of the I-1 to 4? Okay. Motion to receive information items 1 through 4. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Reports to action. Chetland Community Foundation. I'll make that recommendation that the District of Chetland support the Chetland Communication Foundation, Community Foundation uh, proposed amalgamation with the Northeast BC Community Foundation and allow the transfer of all Chetland Community Foundation funds to the Northeast BC Community Foundation. Discussion? So the Rotary Club will be reimbursed for their initial initial donation. Oh, excellent! Thank you. Any others? Go ahead. Staff. Just just one quick one, uh, Mr. Evans. I can't hardly say it without saying Pastor Bill. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Evans. Uh, had mentioned Sue Kenny, and she's actually appearing as a delegation to council on our next meeting. Okay. And I talked to her on the phone about this, and she asked if she could come in there and help. Our only concern was basically if Rotary knew about the, that they were supposed to receive the twenty thousand dollars back, they would start it back up. So that was our only concern. And then the other was fifty thousand from us, fifty thousand from NDIT, an initial startup. And and everybody I talked to said that it is a very it's a very positive move. It gives us strength in numbers, more funding availability though maybe perhaps a little bit less actual in Chatland representation. So kind of a two sides to the coin. Okay, all those in favor? Carry. RA2, Van, Car Van Courier de uh, Development Variance Permit 01-2023. Recommendation that pursuant to section 498 RS2015, Council of the District of Chetland give notice that it will be receiving an application from Van Carrier requesting approval of a development variance permit application to allow the location of a 30 by 40 shop in front of his modular home on the property, property located at Lot 1, District, Lot 1817, East River Regional District Plan 14286, 5648 Westgate Road, Chetland, BC, and that the administration be directed to advertise a public input opportunity with respect, with respect to the above application be scheduled on March 20th, 2023. Okay, discussion? Okay, on the recommendation, all in favor? Okay. Reports, bill new business, public, qu public questions. Adjournment. All those in favor? Oh. I'm Jillian McDonald, a local Tim Hortons owner for Chetwind. And it's camp day and all of our proceeds from hot and iced coffee go to the Tim's Foundation Camps. Um, at the restaurants locally, we're doing a bunch of different incentives. Um, 
pick a sucker for a chance to win a prize. We are doing toss a toonie for prizing as well as selling camp day bracelets and camp day socks. So in the 30 year history of camp day, we have nationally raised $225 million and helped send over 300,000 kids to camp between the ages of 12 and 16. Come on down to your local Tim Hortons or if you're in Chetwin, come see us. Uh, we have police officers washing windows in the drive through lane, which is always a fun time. Please come and help us send a kid to camp. Welcome to our 50th Mogs and Flats Sesame Street 50th anniversary. What a great turnout. Beautiful day yesterday and today. As you can see, we have a lot of events going on with the organizers that did this event. Is people from everywhere that came, like Vancouver, Chilliwack, oh gosh, Killer Lake, Alberta. Grand Prairie, a lot of people, and a lot of us are related because we are all <coughs> did come from Moggison Flats, and where I'm standing is where Moggison Flats was. And I just, just behind me here is where we lived. And just like I said, there's a lot of all the families that lived in Moggison Flats are here attending, and it's everybody's having fun. It's so great to see everybody I haven't seen for 20 years or so and thank you to the organizers Leanne McPeters, Adele Avery, Letha Dowd and Lynette Desjardins and Ruby Knott. They did a lot of work to, to hold this event and they did a beautiful job. For for people that don't know what Mogs and Flats was, is, this is where we lived. This is where we squatted 50 years ago. Um, we just lived in shacks. We had no power, no running water, no nothing. We were all pretty poor, but we all survived. I, don't, I myself don't remember ever being hungry because we had hunters and everybody shared. And yeah, so. In 1971, they uh, built Wabi Crescent. I guess I started in 1969. I'm going to say it took a couple of years to build the houses in Wabi Crescent. And that's where they all moved us to. And the houses were not free. We had to pay a mortgage and a dollar for the lot. So everybody here now is. Marks and Flats and Sesame Street. So it's great to see. <laughs> 